Welcome back, I'm Wes, the sewing machine repair guy, and today I have a machine that was given to me. We're gonna see how good or how bad it is. Let's get started. So this machine is a Brother XL2600i. Uh, I had a friend who was moving and they decided that this did not need to make the trip. And so we are going to take a look at it. They said that it doesn't work right. And I said, what do you mean it doesn't work right? And he said, my wife said it doesn't work right, so it's not making the move. And that's what we've got. So when I look over this machine, so far, uh, really the only thing I see is that it's missing this bobbin cover here, this little plastic cover. Um, I've already looked it up, and you can buy one on Amazon for uh, like six or seven dollars delivered. And it's the same little plastic color cover that's on most of these brother machines. And my wife actually has the same machine and she likes it. It's a very, uh, it's a good workhorse for doing just your normal everyday run of the mill crafting. Uh, nothing, you know, too crazy, no leather or anything like that. It's a pretty good machine. So we're gonna take a look at it and see if we can figure out what's going on. So as I'm looking over this machine, I haven't changed any settings. So right now it's set on two, which is a straight stitch. Our uh, stitch length is set at three. Our stitch width is set in the middle, which it should be for your straight stitch, because this will actually move your needle left and right. So we've got it set in the middle, which is good. Then we have our tension set at seven. So that starts to raise an alarm because Maximum there is nine. It was set at seven Should be at four. So maybe we have a tension issue. Maybe our tension discs up here are um, Fouled with some thread or something, you know, maybe they're dirty or maybe we have we have some bobbin tension issues So you never really know until you get into it. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's just pull on this thread here for the bobbin Okay It's a it's a tiny bit tight but we're gonna go ahead and, like I said, we're gonna get acquainted with the machine by taking it apart, doing a cleaning before we do any sort of troubleshooting. But this pulling on thread is kind of like, you know, getting acquainted with the machine is how I feel about it. So when we're looking at our possibilities of issues with machines, our timing, tension, and troubles, this one on our evidence that we looked at, we investigated, we found that our tension is a little off, so we could have a tension issue with this machine. And if your tension, if you have an issue with tension, it just throws the whole machine off. Oh yeah, there's some good dirt in there. When I get it apart, uh, along with cleaning, one of the things I look for is how easily it turns. I'm looking at the bearings, the four bearings. Brothers have issues with these uh, bearings or, or bushings, however you wanna call them. Not working properly, so they sometimes they'll spin in the plastic instead of the metal spinning around the middle. Um, but you wanna make sure you lubricate those four bushings. There's one behind there, so.
So these tension assemblies on these brothers, um, it's gonna, when you lift your feed dogs, uh, when you lift, these, temp these tension assemblies on these brothers, when you lift your presser foot, it's gonna push this over and spread apart the plates there on your tension assembly. And what we're gonna do is do that and then see if we can get in there to clean. Get between these plates. Let's see if there's anything nasty in there that needs to be cleaned out. And then we're also going to shoot some air in there once we get our air pressure up. And clean the rest of this dust with a little bit of air. This is my mineral oil based lubricant, which is my new favorite because it's a lot less toxic than some of the others. Uh, I still use my TriFlow from time to time, and this bottle's been around for a little while. But um, TriFlow works great for penetrating into older machines that have nasty old grease and oil in there that's turned into basically a sludge glue type thing. But on a newer machine like this, we don't need to do that. But you do need to make sure that you get all of these bushings. And there's four. Now, the bushings come from the factory impregnated with oil, which is why they say that there's no maintenance required on these. They, they say that that oil will last. It does not. Um, so you need to put a little oil on each one of those. For, for your brother machines, a lot of them are, are good machines for doing normal household sewing, but you have to maintain them because that lubrication is not permanent like they would like you to, to believe. When we live in a disposable society things like sewing machines don't get fixed as much as they used to. I never put grease on plastic gears so there are some plastic gears underneath here and there's a, a little bit of leftover grease on there. I'm not going to bother cleaning that out. I think it's fine. But I'm also not going to add grease because I don't think that you need it when you have plastic or nylon gears in this case. <clears throat> now nylon can be very strong for its size um, compared to other things that it could be. I know that there's a lot of people that just won't buy these machines because they're plastic and in fact this one has a plastic frame. So this is not a robust machine by any means but it's you know it's cheap it's good for using around the house to make clothes for your kids you know anything that's not real heavy duty you're not going to be making jeans with this. Uh, you're not going to be sewing leather with this. But for light duty type of things, it works great. And, you know, it's also easily portable because it's light. It doesn't have that metal frame. Now, do I like a metal frame? Absolutely I do. I think it's much better um, because these uh, adjustments that we're about to look at, when you have plastic, the adjustments could be off just because the plastic has warped. Uh, and metal's not going to do that. So, um, your metal will make sure that your machine stays in adjustment longer because the metal will not shift as much as this plastic can. Yeah, so <laughs> I just learned something. Um, when working on these machines, remember this plastic case is, is the frame. And right now we only have half of the frame installed on this machine. So I'm, what I'm looking at now is that if I move this part 
and I've got my hook assembly sitting on a piece of wood. That hook assembly is staying steady, but this the plastic frame is moving. So what that's doing is it's changing the distance between this needle and the hook. So if I have this down here, right now the hook is not touching at all. If I pull this board out and then my hook assembly now moves, now my hook is hitting the needle. So in order to do this adjustment, we're gonna put this machine back together and take a look at that adjustment. All right, we're gonna see how well this shows up, but if you look right in here, this is your tension assembly. And right now, my presser foot is up. When I lower it, my tension assembly is going to come together and those plates are gonna push against each other and push against your thread. So here we go, we're lowering and there we go. We just, uh, now we have tension because those plates are pushed together. And I know that my tension assembly was reassembled correctly because it actually moves when I raise and lower presser foot. So raise and lower. One thing to keep in mind is that uh, on the bottom of this machine, these three screws that I removed do not need to be removed in order to get the machine apart. That's just holding this foot on. And then these two are holding in where the power connects. And there are nuts on the other side. And when you're putting it back together and you've got everything, all the other screws in, and then you push this one in and then the little nut on the other side falls out inside the machine. Then you get to take the whole machine apart again <laughs> and fix that and then put it all back together. So, all right, let's get back to where we were. All right, now this is a little tricky to put back on. So when you do this, first you wanna index it to this little rod right here. So we get it in there. And then now I remember we were somewhere around two to three, somewhere in there. So we wanna push it in a little bit more and we gotta click, oh, that clicked all the way in. So there, sometimes you get like partial, like right here where it's, sometimes you get partial where it'll, you hear clicks as it moves, but it's not all the way down. Cause you gotta be able to see that groove where this uh, C-clip goes. And there you go. So. It, seat it all the way so now that's in there so our stitch length is two and a half which is good and then the stitch that we're on is number two which is our straight stitch which is what we want i'm not going to put this on just yet because i'm testing the machine to see if it's sewing correctly all right so let's pull up this bobbin thread and make sure that at least we've got that working right and we do We're going to do a straight stitch. Again, we're in the middle here. We're in the middle on tension. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, my uh, <coughs> bobbin tension is right now it's a bit too tight. So what you see is my black, which is my upper thread, is being pulled down. You don't see any of the white bobbin thread here. This is the top of the fabric. Now on the bottom of the fabric, you see the white thread, which is very tight, and the black thread is being pulled down all the way to the bottom of this fabric and being looped around that white. So the, the white thread, which is our bobbin thread, is too tight. Okay, we just did about a half turn on the bobbin thread. We'll give that a try. Yeah, now I'm seeing a little bit of the white thread on the top, and I'm seeing the black thread being pulled down through the bottom, so that's pretty good. So now we're going to do a zigzag and see how that looks. So I should go to number three. We're gonna go to the widest zigzag, and we're gonna go down to a lower stitch length. The reason I do this is because this is the hardest stitch for these machines is a wide zigzag and a low stitch length. 
So it's doing all these zigzags really close together. Sometimes I'll even go in even lower than one. We're gonna try this and see how it looks. So that's a very good tension right there. You're about 80% of the bobbin is on the bottom. We're not pulling the bobbin thread to the top. So that's a good stitch. For this little home machine, that is a really good stitch. And I'm very happy with that. So we checked that our feeding is correct. We checked that our that our uh, needle threader is aligned properly. We checked our tensions. In this case, we had a tension problem. Um, one thing that we have to finish is we've got to put this back together and then we're going to clean the outside of the machine. Let me show you real quick a few products that I use to clean. So one is my crud cutter. I've got this in a you know bottle because I buy it by the gallon now. But crud cutter, uh, which is a good product that I use. And then when I'm done and I want the machine to look brand new, I use some of this. This is something that I learned from some people that uh, repair um, 1980s computers and they use this to restore that plastic and this is also used for people that do um, uh, vehicles they they the plastic on the outside of vehicles this helps to make that plastic look brand new so I've been using it on machines and I'm really happy with the results you don't use a whole lot you just kind of spray it on a rag and wipe it over the machine and, and leave it dry um, and that's good enough it makes it makes the plastic kind of shiny, makes it look brand new. Uh, my customers have remarked that their machines look brand new again when I give it back to them. So I, I do recommend this. I'll have a link below. It's a, it's a um, Amazon affiliate link. So what that means is that you pay the same price, but I get a little bit of commission back on that to the channel to help us make more videos like this. So this is something that's pretty cool. I like it and I've been using it for a while and I'm going to continue to use it because I like it. I think that's about it. You know, really the only problem with this machine was tension and it was, it was given um, the, you know, the lady that was using it a heck of a time. She uh, didn't enjoy sewing with it and so she wanted to get rid of it and get a new one later. And that's kind of, you know, these machines are seen as disposable, especially being all plastic frame construction, but it's still a good machine. And it's a, it's a workhorse. And what I like to do is I like to uh, buy things that are kind of on the cheaper end first. And then when I grow beyond the, the ability of that machine, then I'll change over to something nicer and newer. And that's kind of how I've run my YouTube channel uh, with the camera setups that I have. I started out with cheap cameras. And then once I grew and understood how to use cameras, uh, I grew beyond the ability of what the equipment that I had, I bought nicer equipment that has more features on it and I'm continuing to learn those new features because I am not a videographer uh, but anyway the last thing we want to do here before I let you go is I see that there's some plastic on here Oh, uh, here we go. So satisfying. <laughs>